Hello. So I'm sitting here and I am putting together my 2018 albums and I decided I am going to make a little video and kind of show you how I scrapbook and kind of explain my thought process of how I stay organized in getting my albums done. So I scrapbook chronologically, but I don't scrapbook chronologically. And what I mean with that is that my albums are scrapbooked chronologically, but I scrapbook photos not in order. So if I have a certain paper pack I'm working with, I will go find a photo that works with that paper pack and scrapbook it and then stash it away until I am done with that entire year and then I'll put it in an album. So let me kind of show you and walk you through that process. Okay, so forgive me, my room is not the cleanest right now because like I said, I'm right in the middle of um, putting together an album. But I'm going to start with the very first thing that I do. I absolutely love these little boxes from Close to My Heart. Um, they're a great value, they're a great size, and they are perfect for photos. So each year I have one of these um, boxes and I put my photos in them. And I just put them by activity, by theme. So I'll do something like this. And then the next set of photos will be going in another direction. So that is how I organize my photos. And then I can easily kind of thumb, thumb through as I decide what photos I want to scrap up with the paper pack or paper collection that I am using. Now this holds up to a four by six photos. You can squeeze some five by sevens in there, but they're going to um, fold over. Let me show you, I have some in here. So this is a four by eight, I believe. So it's kind of just bent a little, which I'm okay with because I'm gonna tape them down into an album. Here's a five by seven. So I do have larger photos in there, but, um, four by sixes fit the best, which I think that most people scrapbook in a four by six. Okay, so after I have my photos and I take a paper collection and I scrapbook my layout, so here's a finished layout. Um, this actually is not one that I scrapbooked with the photos, but I just have it out to show you um, my process and I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I organize my pages that don't have photos and what I do with those um, after I tell you all of this. So I'll finish it and then, oh, this one doesn't have it. I will write with a safe marker, family, and then the year, 2022. So the, the front of my page, obviously there's gonna be journaling. I'm gonna know what the event was by just looking at the page. But by writing on the back, I know which album it goes in and what year. So it is in the family album in the year 2022. I do an album for my daughter, an album for my son, and then a family album. So this is gonna go in our family album. So I then have these boxes, don't mind the mess around, um, that I will just throw layouts in. They're not really organized. I just throw them in there to kind of get them away and put them in a safe spot. I do a lot more in my family album, so I have our bigger box for that. I love these boxes for this kind of stuff. So I have family, and then our smaller books, I have one for Lily, one for Carson. So all of those are layouts that I have done for both of their books. Now, these have lots of years in them. They do have it written on the back, Lily, 2018, 2019, 2020, 22, whatever, right? It has that. Now, when these start to get full, I'll go through and I'll organize them by year. So I'll put all the 2019 together, all the 2020 together, 2021, 2022, so on and so forth. I will empty these totes. And then we're going to walk over to my closet where I have them organized by year. So you'll see I have a box for 2019, a box for 2020. For both my kids, I have um, family over here. And so this is where I'll sit and I'll organize them by year um, in each child or our family album. And you'll see that there's a box for each of those. Now, once I am done with the pictures from that year 
and there's no more photos, I know I'm done with that year. And we're gonna show you what I do next. Okay, so once I am done with a year, I am going to, this is all three albums out. It's a little crazy, but that's okay. So once I'm done, I take that whole box. So right here was Carson's 2018. And his, or his pages are all lined up right there. And I'll go through and I'll start putting them in chronologically, or chronological order for the year. So I start in January and I go through all the way through December, which is here. You notice that some of my pages are out like that. That's just because they go roughly in that area and then I will squeeze them in when I go to put them all in page protectors. So my next step is to put these in page protectors and I have started that with Lillian's album here. So I have started to put it in page protectors. Now, right here, there's an empty spot and that's fine. I just want to get them in page protectors because putting them in and out of page protectors is simple. If I need to move things around, I can. And then if I find anything that's random, I can put it in later. But I am going to go ahead and put all of her pages into page protectors and then we'll put them into an album. So I am going to go off screen real quick and finish putting her pages into the page protectors and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I got her pages all into an album. Like I said, there's going to be some blank pages that um, I do have a few more pages. Like I've, I've got a scrapbook for her book that I'll be able to slide into these fun little spots. But I did want to point out that... I use Pocket Plus pages. I love them, love them, love them. And um, when I use those and I create a page, I'll actually put those into a Pocket Plus, the extra pictures. And then when I store them in my boxes and they're waiting to go into an album, all I do is I simply stack them in the middle. Let's just scoot this. So here's his page. I stack them in the middle of the double page layout so that they stay together so that when I put it in an album, I know exactly where it goes. And then um, I can put it on there. Same thing with flip flaps. As I'm creating, if I know it's going to need a flip flap, I'll throw it in there, put it between the two pages, stack it in my box, and that way I know that it's good to go. So one more thing I am going to point out real quick is if you can't afford the cool plastic pretty boxes when your orders ship to you and they come in a box this size we call them the pizza boxes they are perfect for that you'll notice that most of my boxes in the closet are actually out of these boxes and i love it love to repurpose love to recycle those um so now i'm going to go through and i will do the same thing to both carson's album and our family album and get them in into albums and on the shelf for my kids to look at. I love it. It, it works for me. It's to my brain and that's how I scrapbook and that's how I stay organized. Now I am going to do a little bit of a short video after this to show you about my pages that don't have any pictures on them. But if this is all you wanted to see, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to stay organized and to get your pictures into albums. Remember, you can find me at scrapwithamber.closetomyheart.com and buy lots of fun organization things right there on my website. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for sticking around for this little tiny video that's at the end to show you what I do with my finished pages that have no pictures. So I have these cool little uh, magazine organizers, but they fit 12 by 12s. The place that I have found them, I'm sure you can find them online, but Joann's is a place that I've been able to find them. If you can't find the plastic ones, they do have cardboard ones that work great. So I have these, they are organized by like school. I have outdoor stuff. And I actually keep all of my extra paper that kind of goes along with that theme right here next to. So this is outdoor and camping stuff. These are all my paper pads and things that I have bought along the way, whether they're close to my heart or other brands. 
um, all my camping stuff's right there. So if I don't have a page that will work for my photos, I know I can go right next to it and grab some paper to make a cute page. So I have family things. I have summer. Again, this is all family paper, all summer type paper, whether it be pool, anything kind of summer related. Girl, so all my girly stuff's here. Boy, got some boy stuff. Um, kids at play, sports. I'm just kind of going through um, the things that I have and how I've organized them. And then I do have holidays here. So I have Easter, Christmas, and winter. Fall and Halloween are together. Now you'll notice that there's no paper next to these. I actually have some paper in another place because I simply had too much to put it into this shelf to put it next to those files. So what I'll do is say, oh, I need to scrapbook some Christmas papers or pictures. So I'll pull my box, pull it over here, and I go through and I'll pull out layouts. So I'll put it here. I have my photos with me and I can kind of see and gauge will this work out? Will this layout to work with the photos I have? If not, I skip to the next one, which is going to be this layout, which is not completely finished, which is fine. I have some of those too. And I can say, oh, are my photos going to work with this? And if they do, what I'll do is either take the time right then and put my photos on or if I have a crop coming up, I will simply take the page, stack my photos, and throw them into a box like you will see right here. I have some finished layouts with some photos that are gonna go on that layout. I have, this must be something that's going on in 2018, so family 2018, I have it stacked like that. That way when I get to the crop, all I have to do is one by one take these out, put the pictures on, and they're finished. And I feel like I get so much done. So that's my little snippet of how I do that. Um, thanks for watching. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.